Hello, everybody. Welcome to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology, the uh, Letterman Row special, I guess, where we go around the country and talk to Ohio State targets, recruits, prospects, uh, commitments, etc. Uh, today, we're back in the class of 2022. And uh, again, going down the list of potential options for the Buckeyes in that class. And we're going to head down to Georgia and talk to Kojo Antwi, wide receiver from Lambert High School in Sewanee. Um, Kojo, thank you for taking time to be on the show. I, 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 you're not a guy we've written a lot about, but I know how highly the Buckeyes think of you. And, uh, so welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Are, are you getting, uh, used to this attention yet? The recruiting is obviously, I, I think for a lot of kids, it kind of comes out of nowhere when it hits. Um, yeah. How how are you handling the the attention the you know the you know media scrutiny all that kind of stuff? Um, at first it was crazy, you know. I really didn't know how to like handle it, but you know, as soon as you know, as it started to like go on, as the recruiting process started to go on with like you know colleges and stuff like that, you know, I started to ease into it. You know, I started to get you know comfortable stuff like that. So. So you're down in Georgia. You do have an offer from the Bulldogs. And a lot of people uh, in in my neck of the woods think that, hey, okay, here's a kid in Georgia. Georgia's offered. He's going to end up at UGA. So we could cut this interview real short if you want. And Is it worth it for other schools to continue recruiting you as schools like Ohio State who offered you in the last two months? Uh, but they have spent a lot of time getting to know you very quickly. Um, what What is it about programs like Ohio State that still make it worth their time to, to be in contact? Um, Ohio State, you know, you know, it's a very well-known, you know, college football, you know, program. Um, you know, they compete for a national championship almost every year, you know. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, my recruitment's still open. You know, Georgia is, you know, my home. You know, I've been here all my life. But, you know, my parents told me, like, if you don't want to stay in Georgia, you don't have to, but, you know, let's we'll see what happens. And you do have family in Ohio, correct? You, you, I do, Cincinnati. So have you ever been to the great state of Ohio? That's what we call I it. Have. That's what we call it. So, I mean, that, <laughs> that's not just, that's not me doing just being, Magu you know, that's what, that's what's on the signs. How often have you been to Ohio? When was the last time you were here? Um, I actually went to Ohio last month. Um, my um cousin, he has, you know, some kidney problems. So, you know, we went to go see him. But um I've been to Ohio about three times. Um I went to Cleveland once, Cincinnati once, and um I went to Columbus once as well. So but is is it unfortunate, obviously, I mean, uh, you know, family issues aside, it's not like you would have been taking a trip to Ohio to see Ohio State, but it certainly would have been easier for you. Uh, to have the visits, you know, be open so you could go check out the Buckeyes last month, I assume. Yeah, yeah. So who are you talking to the most at Ohio State, Brian Hartline or Ryan Day? Uh, Coach Hartline. Um, I, I talk to him almost, you know, two times, three times a week. Um, yeah, we catch up. Um, we, we talk about what's going on in the world right now. You know, we talk ball, stuff like that. I don't want you to put like a – numerical value on the relationship versus any other school, but how does that relationship stack up? Do you feel like you and Brian Hartline are on the same level as you and coaches that have recruited you longer, or is there still a lot of work to to do for Ohio State to get into that conversation? I feel like there's a, I mean, a little bit of work to do, you know, because, you know, I just got offered by them. And so I just started talking to Coach Hartline, but, you know, me and Coach Hartline have like a really good, you know, connection, um, relationship as well. You know, I can talk to him about anything, you know. All right, you are a wide receiver. Do you play any other positions down there at Lambert? I'll play DB a little bit. Um, I'm going both ways next year. So But wide receiver is where you want to be. You want the ball in your hands. Yeah. But yeah. As a receiver, do you watch Ohio State and see what Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson and these guys are doing? And how appealing is that when you see like dudes running wide open all game long? I mean, there's nobody ever guarding them. I don't know how it's possible. 
<laughs> I mean, it's it's fun to watch. You know, I, I watch Ohio State every week. You know, it's they're a fun team to watch. You know, I like I like watching Chris Olaf. You know, he's a great player. Um, you know, you know. How long have you played football? Um, I started playing football in seventh grade. You know? It, what is it about your game? And I, this is, I guess, honest self-assessment time, Kojo. What is it that these coaches, Ohio State, Georgia, big-time schools around the country, what are they saying? Why are they offering you now? What are they seeing on tape that is making them, like, turn their heads? Um, I think it's my explosiveness and my speed. Um, you know, they said I can, you know, every anytime I get the ball in my hands, you know, I can make a big play and stuff like that, so. I think that's what really is catching their you know, attention. Is there a player or two that you've watched growing up where you're like, okay, I'm going to try to model my game after this guy? I mean, who who are you on tape for fans who are watching your highlights right now for the first time? What should they – what influences should they see? Um, probably Julio Jones. Um, I grew up watching him. That's the reason why we're at number 11. You know, he's a really great player, and, you know. For him to be that big and for him to move like that is, you know, something that really catches my eye. So, is there a plan for you right now as far as the process? I mean, obviously, you and, and everyone else in your class is still affected by this dead period stuff, so you can't make any visits till April at the earliest. How do you think that that will affect you moving forward in this recruiting process? Um. You know, you obviously want to be, you obviously want to, you know, like be coaches in person. You obviously want to visit, but you know, I, I think it's affected all of us. Um, but I think, you know, I'm still on course. So, you know, I already have like a, you know, a set plan of when I'll commit and stuff like that. So. So you have a, a top eight coming out here at the end of the year. What is the plan in your mind for a commitment date? Do you are is that something you want public yet, or you just have like a date in mind that you're keeping private, or or what what date? How much longer, I guess, do teams like Ohio State have to 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 have an opportunity to get into the that final uh, decision for you? I do have a date, but you know I want to keep that private. But um um. But there's Honestly. enough time for them to still work yeah, their way to do it. Time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what people want to see. They want. They're wondering, you know, how how that how that plays out. For you, has there been any contact yet with the Ohio State commitments in the class of 2022? Um, obviously, Bennett Christian down there in Georgia is a guy that you know maybe uh, is familiar to you at least since he's not from too far away. Um, and if so, you know, what do you think of the guys in that group? Um, I actually have, haven't had any conversation, I mean, you know, contact with, um, you know, the 22 commits, but I've been watching um, Quinn Ewers, you know, Tate, Caleb Burton's Tate, you know, they're really good players, you know. How much impact does a quarterback have on a wide receiver? As you, you know, you see Ohio State, you see Georgia, you know, Georgia, you know, has Brock Vandegrift in the 21 class. They'll probably end up with a highly ranked 22. They always do. Ohio State has, you know, five-star C.J. Stroud in the class of 2020, five-star Kyle McCord in 21, five-star Quinn Ewers in 22. How important is the quarterback room to a receiver? Um, as a receiver, you know, you want, a, you want a quarterback that can get you the ball. Um, that's what every receiver wants. You know, it's really important, um, you know. Is there a, 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 a group of guys that you're closest with at this point? I mean, I know the kids in Georgia, you guys are all talk a lot generally. Um, you know, is there a commitment class or, or players from around the country that you've gotten familiar with? Um, I'm good friends with um, FSU commit, um, Travis Hunter. You know, I work out with him um, every week. You know, I go see him play. You know, I'm on his seven on seven team. And, you know, yeah. How has your uh, junior season gone for you? I mean, it, it statistically, what what have you done uh, this year um, to really improve your game from a year ago to start earning all this attention? Um, one big thing that I chose to work on last off season was on um, you know, my catching, um, route running, um, you know, getting faster. You know, things in general, like everything in general. That's what I, I, I've been working on. So. Has it been hard? I mean, this year, obviously, 2020 has been a, a nightmare for pretty much everyone. 
in, in a way has has the quarantine, the lack of visits, all that stuff, has that actually been able to help keep you working out? Because what else are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, when when the uh, quarantine first started, um, you know, I, I worked out every, every single day. Um, there was really nothing to do. So, you know, I just... If, if you break Got down your list, Kojo, um, you know, as you start to break down the list and you get ready to release that top eight uh, in two weeks... What is the most important item or two uh, that a school has to have for you to still include them in that list? Um, I think great academics. Um, I think, you know, communication as well is a big thing. Um, yeah. Is there something specific that you know you are and you're like, okay, I'm going to study this. I want to do this. If football doesn't work out, what, what's... Well, I mean, no big deal here, Kojo, but uh, what do you? what is your life going to be like? What do you got planned out? Well, I want to major in the computer science. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do if football doesn't work out. So, so you're like designing video games or you are <laughs> in cybersecurity? Cybersecurity. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Here's something that I found very interesting while researching you today uh, for this interview was that you have the exact same name as a Ghanaian musician who is like the big thing in, in Ghanaian music, yeah. apparently. Is that intentional? Was that like an homage to, to Kojo Antwi? I mean, how did you end up with the exact same name? Is that just a, a familiar name? Um, yeah, it is a familiar name. Um, my parents say, you know, we're in a tribe. So um, I was born on Monday. So that's why I got the name Kojo. So every single you know, day has a, you know, set name. So. Oh, that is fascinating. But do you like his music? I listen to a few of his music, but I mean, I'm not really a big fan of his music. But. I mean, but imagine as you progress in your life and the opportunities that come your way, if you like make it to the NFL or something like that, the, the, the connections are pretty obvious and you can, he can write your like entrance music. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, could. That'd be pretty yeah. fantastic. So who do you listen to? What what What's the music that you are listening to since you're not listening to your namesake? I'm going to listen to all types of music, but mostly rap. Um, I'm a big Will Baby fan. Um, um, I listen to his music before games. You know, I listen to music in the car. What day of the week is Little Baby born? Like, that, that's what I'm wondering. Baby. Like, what, <laughs> what, what, what day of the week is Little Baby uh, in the, you know... Um, it, it, like the, the, the check mark, there's gotta be a matrix in there somewhere. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, what, what do you want to, to, to have happen still with you and Ohio state? I mean, what, what are the things, the one or two things that they need to really um, check off for you so that you can feel more comfortable with the Buckeyes? And I'll let you get out of here after this. one. Um, nothing really. Um, I really just can't wait to get up there, you know, for a visit, you know, meet them in person, meet coach Farline in person. Did you did you get a chance to see campus when you were in Columbus before? I did not. No. Well, it is pretty uh, interesting. And uh, certainly, Kojo Antwi, a name to watch for Ohio State fans. I, I Again, I wanted folks to get to know you a little bit because I think that, you know, we, we, we talk a lot in the recruiting circles about the guys that the Buckeyes are recruiting. And because 2022 is off to such a weird start by you being unable to visit and stuff like that, I think that people – may lose track of who's out there and who's actually getting real interest from the Buckeyes and who's actually really interested in Ohio State as well. So uh, thank you, Kojo, for taking time to be on the show this week. That's Kojo Antwi, wide receiver, Lambert High School in Sewanee, Georgia. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Bermanology on Letterman Row. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll be back next week with another guest.